us through all of that mess. Amen. See, in a family, the more if you got one person, think about this. If you have one person in a family doing all the pressing, and y'all know what I'm talking about, amen. Don't that just wear you out? It's the same way spiritually. When you come in the house of God and you got the same people doing all the pressing, somebody's getting wore out. Matter of fact, somebody don't eat. Somebody's running dry and going empty. And this is why I get so excited when I look around and I see different people, amen, pressing their way. And you see folks that you know struggling, pressing their way. Not only into his house, but into his presence. You can come into his house and never touch him. My God. I don't want to just come into his house. I need... I'm like the lady with the issue because I got issues. Y'all might be alright, but I'm like the woman with the issue. Look, I just need one touch every time I come in, too. I need a touch every time. And let me tell you something. Ain't nothing you got gonna stop me from pressing my way to Jesus. Because I got to get to it. Matter of fact, you better move out of the way. Amen.
Are y'all with me? I know we're saints and I know we're Christians, but we're troubled. Y'all with me, right? And so, as the Lord, see, one thing about really helping someone, you can help someone through something you have not truly been in and came out of. Because other than that, you're speaking words you don't even understand. Matter of fact, you're quoting somebody else's testimony. That's right. And the reason that he gave me this word is because he brought my mind out of a troubled place. Are y'all with me? Yeah. And when it snapped and I realized that it had been done, I said, my God, Jesus really can fix it. Saints, there's some things that we've been living with so long, we think that's just the way it's going to be. Oh, there's some people in here know what I'm talking about. Amen. There's some people that's got some things going on and just say, you know what? It's just, it's just going to be like this. Let me tell you something. Jesus can fix it. Amen. He just moved just like that. He said, trouble, flee. And I'm like, my God, where did he go? I know he hit somebody. Because when he took it out of the legion, it hit them swine. I feel sorry for the person that it hit. Amen. And so, look at the book of John, the 14th chapter, 1 through 6. Let us touch on this. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place. Church say, prepare, prepare. a place. I could really stop right there, but I got to keep going. It says, uh, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And wherever I go, you know, and the way you know. He just said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Yeah. You know, I remember I was privileged to be before you a few weeks ago or so and share with you the message, amen, about uh, the battle is not yours. And, and, and the Lord keep bringing me to these places because, see, it's good to get up and just talk about being hyperly, excitingly blessed and highly favored. But the problem is, many of us are battling and struggling privately. The Bible would say privately, amen, and we're not sure how to overcome. We don't know who to talk to because everybody else is blessed and highly favored. Yeah. Are y'all with me? And so we find ourselves in a place by ourselves, holding on to ourselves and not getting any better. Yes. Amen. That's right. Anybody with me? Yes, sir. I'm preaching today now. Amen. Yes, right. And so I say, Lord, please give me a real word yeah. that speaks directly to the place that people live and reside. Amen. And so, he brought me here. You see, and in the last message, the Lord was speaking to us about how the battle, the biggest battle is the battle in our mind. Yeah. Amen. And when you study the mind, you study the, it, it, it can be written sometimes that you, you use the word mind and heart synonymously. They can have the same mind, heart, will. They'll be used synonymously. Amen? And so, I said, well, Lord, how do we deal with that? Because it's so internal. Amen? 
We good at dressing everything. This thing is internal. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so it's easy to make it look healthy yeah. and strong. Uh. Amen. Amen. But see, what I love about the Lord is that the scripture makes it clear that God is very concerned about the condition of the heart. Yes, sir. Yes. It's a wonderful thing if he bless your legs and you walk again and you see again. God is more concerned about the condition of the heart than your body ever being healed. That's right. That's right. And that's why when you have these big, I believe in healing. I've been healed. But when you have these big ceremonial services where everybody's being healed on the outside and nothing. Yeah. 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 I believe in healing. But I told a man one time, he was talking to me, I said, listen, that's all great. And I'll come. And I went. I said, but I need you to know one thing. I need something. See, when you heal my legs and I get up and start walking, I can take them same legs back to the place where I was yes. right. seeking around. And come on, y'all. Yeah. Y'all yeah. better stop playing. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. You can get my eyes again, and I'm still looking at stuff that's crazy. Yeah. I said, Lord, I need something, though, sir, that's going to do something about my heart, the part that no one knows but me and God. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You just want to walk? That's all you want to do is walk? Those legs will take you right back. Yes, sir. Yeah. And it's dangerous to see anyway. Yes. <laughs> Some of us will be better off blind. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so Solomon said this. Solomon said this. The wisest man ever lived said this in Proverbs 4.23. He said, above all else, guard your heart. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. For it is the wellspring of life. That's right. <clears throat> it is the spring. Everything living bubbles out of the heart. Yeah. So Solomon said, guess what? You better guard that. Yeah. <clears throat> Amen. Listen, Jeremiah says, this is Jeremiah 17, 9 to 10. He says, the heart, which should be rendered as a human mind, is more deceitful yeah. than anything else. It's, he said, above all things, did y'all hear me? Stop thinking you got a good heart. Did you hear what the word just said? It says out of everything. You know how the Bible talks about the tongue is fiery. Mm. He says the heart is deceitful above all things. See, somebody don't be a preacher, but I'm preaching anyway. So just sit tight. Don't get up and walk around. Let me know that's the devil. <laughs> Amen. And he goes on and says, it is desperately wicked. It means it's incurably bad. There's no cure to the heart. Are y'all with me? Then he says, who can understand or who can know it? That's what let you know. Nobody but God knows. That's right. When people be telling me, oh, I know my wife, I know, I just I, I know my children. By and by. Those folks say by and by. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. You think you know, right? Yes. Then verse 10 says, I, the Lord, probe into people's minds. I examine people's hearts. I deal with each person according to how he has behaved. I give them what they deserve based on what they've done. It's a translation. Amen. Yeah. See, the heart is like a sponge. The danger of a sponge is anything it touches, it absorbs. It, everything that the heart touches, it absorbs. You just have to, you have to wring that sponge back out. But it has already absorbed it. Are y'all with me? Everything you expose the heart to, it absorbs. It already got it. Amen. Are y'all with me? 
And so, I said, Lord, you got to help us with this heart condition. Amen. And so the Lord searches. He searches. He searches. The Bible makes it clear that the Lord searches according to the heart. Yeah. He searches people according to the heart. Matter of fact, when God sent, in, in, in 1 Samuel 16 and 7, when God sent uh, prophet Samuel, find him a man. He says, but the Lord said to Samuel, don't be impressed by his appearance or his height. For I have rejected him. God does not view or look yeah, yeah. at things the way men do. He said, people look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Yeah. We'll choose a president by the outward appearance. And, and the Lord can be done revealed to his heart. Amen. So, because the heart is easily contaminated, it occasionally needs surgery. Yes. Yeah. 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 Surgery. Actual surgery. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cut wide open. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and. The Lord, in his infinite wisdom, he knows just how to do that, amen? That's right, amen. Look, look, look at how he makes it clear that he's a surgeon. Uh, I believe it's Hebrew 4 and 12. You know the scripture. Hebrew 4 and 12 says, For the word of God, let me read the translation, is living and active and sharper than any double-edged or two-edged sword. That's the knife they cut. Yeah. Right. It's the word. Amen. Listen, and this is how deep he cut. Piercing even to the point of dividing the soul from the spirit. Yes. yes. Joints from the marrow. God Almighty. And it's able to judge the desires yes, and thoughts. Even the intent of the heart. You haven't even done it. It's just an intention. Yes, sir. Yeah. He already cut right there. Yeah. Okay. Right. Amen. Amen. So, the Lord, when you're going to the Lord, <laughs> tell him the truth. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell the Lord the truth, amen. Amen. He know what you was about to think. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. My God. And, you know, in the book of Isaiah, it makes it clear that the sheep wander. Amen. Because God has to guard us because we have wandering hearts. Our hearts wander and it just kind of wanders after our thoughts. Because the thoughts lead the heart. And the heart starts wondering about those thoughts. Is anybody with me? Yes. You good old sanctified people do. Y'all know what I'm talking about too. <laughs> Amen. The heart is the heart. Uh -huh. This word applies to all of us. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And so... The heart cannot be understood by man's wisdom. Amen? But I want you to keep thinking about this. Your heart is the well, it is your wellspring of life. See, think about this. Do you know the easiest way for us all to be contaminated is for someone to contaminate our drinking water? Are y'all with me? If someone contaminates our drinking water, we drink it every day. Whatever they put in there, we'll be full of it. And so the more we don't guard the wellspring of life, the more contaminated it gets. Are you with me? Yeah. And Jesus knew what the disciples were in the scripture. Jesus knew that they were in a place where they had troubled hearts. 
Amen. And I want to go into that. See, those things you can say by and by, but the farther you go on this Christian journey and you really get to know God, the more you realize how troubled your heart is and how far it is from God. It's not the only way your heart is renewed and changed is by God yeah. alone. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Amen. God does it. Amen. God does it. Amen. And so, because we're not able to. Thank we're not able to. So because of this, the heart needs preparing. Tell somebody the heart needs preparing. That wasn't everybody. Tell somebody the heart needs preparing. The heart needs preparing. Saying the heart really does need preparing. It constantly needs preparing. Amen. Amen. Think about this. Just as the human heart needs preparing, the reason why they give you a stress test is because the stress test will tell you how much your heart can take. The human heart needs preparing just to deal with the strenuous activities of life. Yeah. And if your human heart can't take the stress, it can't take the test. Yeah. That's right. Are you with me? Yeah. And the same way it is naturally, it is the same way spiritually. The heart, our spirit needs testing and, and preparing because it's coming. And that thing stopped beating too fast. Spiritually. And then you're going to blow something. Amen. Amen. So, I'm going to get back to the tape. I want to touch some more stuff first. Psalm 78. Go to Psalm 78. Quick. The heart needs to be prepared. I want you to see this. Psalm 78 and 6 through 8. It says that the generation, he's talking about the children of Israel. What he was saying in this passage, he was saying that, he was talking about, listen, Give them my word. Pass down my word. My word will prepare them. But then he says, this, he says, that the generation that come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. Declare what? The word of God. He says that they may, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. And might be as their fathers, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart, means prepared. They didn't prepare their heart for God. They didn't prepare their heart for God through the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. And whose spirit was not steadfast, not firm with God. Saints, our hearts have to be constantly prepared. Yeah. Amen. You see, the disciples had a good reason to have a troubled heart. Listen, they had sat down at the table having dinner earlier. And Jesus had just told them in John 13, 21 that there was a traitor in their midst. Yeah. Now once you find out that someone close to you is a traitor, that'll trouble your heart. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And sometimes close folks turn out to be traitors. Yeah. Lord God, I wish I didn't have to say that, but I have to say that. Amen. Sometimes they're close and traitors, Pastor. <laughs> Good God. That was Jesus. And uh, so if you're a traitor, don't get up. You're going to recognize you. And he spoke of his leaving them, amen, and going where they could not follow. And listen, Jesus saw in their faces confused hearts. He saw hurt hearts. He saw disappointed hearts. He saw fearful and frustrated hearts. Because the heart go through a lot of different changes. He saw the world caving in, amen. And then in chapter 14, it kind of follows along in the preceding chapter, and the conversation kind of goes, you know, and he begins to comfort them by telling them that he was going to depart to his father's house. 
Yeah. He was telling them to prepare a place. But he said, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back to get you. Amen. And if you don't get anything else today, what I want you to know is that there's a place of triumph mm -hmm. right. with a troubled heart All right. yeah. in God. Yeah. Even with a troubled heart, there's a place of victory. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. There's a triumphant place that is prepared for you and I in God. Are you with me? In God now. In God. Definitely. In God. Not, not, not without it. But in God though. Let me make it plain a little bit. See. There are students that are in school. Amen. Troubled by the peers. Troubled by teachers. And. The peers are telling them that you got to fit in. And they get bad grades from the teacher, and they, and they blame the teacher too. Just trouble. And that's why a lot of times the kids will come home and they'll say, I don't like my school. Trouble. And a lot of times because parents don't know better, they'll jump right in with the child and blame the teacher and the students too. Because the child is dealing with trouble. Right. Just jump right in. I'm only going to go get this teacher. That's right. That's right. And the teacher saying, you just don't know your, do you realize your child? <laughs> what it really says, you don't know what's in your child's heart. Yeah. Yeah. When they're out of your sight. Right. Amen. Mm. When they're out of your sight. Sorry. You see it. <laughs> God. It's out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. And so, even with adults, adults are working jobs and relationships. And we find ourselves many times complaining about the people we work with and the people here and the people there and all of these different things. And what we don't realize is that people may be the beginning or people may add to your trouble. But people is not the solution to your problem. Yes. Yes. And so if people is not the solution to your problem, you got to find some other resolution. You're going to get it in a minute. Because, think about this, I'll give you one example. In Daniel 6, you know what Daniel would talk, you know what Daniel and the lion's in, amen? Just a quick paraphrase here. When King Darius the Mede organized his kingdom, he set up 120 governors, right? And they were supposed to report to the three princes. And of those three princes, one of them was the Israelite Daniel. But Daniel, and Daniel was the best. And because Daniel was the best prince, King Darius turned around and said, you know what, I'm going to take all of this and give it to Daniel. I'm, 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 I'm going to put Daniel over everything. Now you know what happens if you take Rule and power away from other folks and give it to All right. one. Y'all already know. So it happened. So they began to plot and plan to get Daniel. But they said, you know what, we can't find nothing on Daniel because Daniel does things right. But you know what, we can always use this God against him. Because Daniel's going to pray three times a day no matter what. So, King, let's get a decree. For 30 days, they ain't supposed to pray. Right after they signed the king, Darius signed the decree, they were right Daniel in their praying. It's the king. Daniel broke the law. And so, King Darius was in a place that he reluctantly had them to go and get Daniel. Because realistically, the king believed in the God of Daniel. He believed in Daniel, but he couldn't show it. He said, well, go ahead. Bring Daniel. So what they did? They throw Daniel in the lion's den. Amen? But what I want you to see, though, is that when they threw him in the lion's den, the king Darius said, Daniel, the God that you always serve and the God that you always pray to, he's, he, he, he'll, he'll deliver you. Yeah. Yes. The 
King went home that night. He couldn't sleep, couldn't eat. Pausing and turning. Because he's wondering, is Daniel God going to really deliver him? Yes. So he woke up the next morning. He yelled out, Daniel! Daniel! He's scared. Did your God deliver you? Daniel's in the lion's den church. What I want you to see, Daniel is in a place that you are supposed to die. Yes. Come on. Yes. Daniel is in a place where other folks are ready to die. Not only that, the only reason why this place exists is to kill folks and take them out. Daniel is in the place where other folks die all the time and was expected to die. When he came looking for Daniel, Daniel said, my God sent an angel. Yeah, yeah, yes. Good God Almighty. My God sent an angel. And he shut the mouth of him. Did you just believe? Good God Almighty. We worry too much about the mouth of the enemy. But if you just trust God, God will send an angel and shut the mouth of the enemy. Good God Almighty, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But see, what you got to see, see, we would have been praying that God killed the lion. See, the lion is not your problem. Be here. 
and Ed's going to be here too. I said, good God, I'm out of love. I missed it.
Yeah. Listen, people be in relationship and all they do is sit and look at they marry. Yeah. All day long, not like, what's complaining about that? Couples don't never smile. Don't never, you know, y'all better come over here because it's happening. There's nothing romantic about your relationship because they just all the time. You think I want to say that foolishness? Let me get out of here. My God. Are y'all listening? I know you're a serious person, but still, God created you to laugh. Smile sometimes. Fake it to me. Do something. Say we in this troubled place and we're just serious and just all the time. Because we don't see our way out. Everybody trying to kill us in our mind. Hey, bro, it was something about the way you shook my hand this time. Yeah. <laughs> is, y'all, is, is anybody talking about me? <laughs> hey, it's bad. It's bad, man. Amen. 
Think about this. When he told the disciples, remember when the disciples had been playing all night? And remember when they had been fishing all night and they had nothing? Amen. Jesus walked right into that situation. And he told them, throw your net on the other side. Right. Are you with me? And then the net was full and overflowing. They were just in a troubled place and had done all that they could. And in a moment, Jesus stepped right in and said, yeah, I'm going to throw it over there. Yes. Just because you've been toiling all night and ain't got nothing. That don't mean that God can't do it. Because God has prepared a place for you. And you receive it by faith. When you think about when, when, when the disciples were in a storm and Jesus walked directly into their situation. First thing you got to look at is that Jesus walked on top of troubled water. Amen. And he spoke into their situation. And he said, peace be still. See, they was just in a troubled place. But God prepared a place of peace in the midst of the storm. Yes. Do you hear me? Yes. So even though trouble is all around you, look for Jesus. Look for Jesus. Look for Jesus. Because he's going to speak right there. Man. 
I gotta cry sometimes. 